Cost of goods sold is the name of the deduction you get for your inventory. And if you're a reseller, there's no way around it. This video is gonna simply describe how it works and how to navigate some of the common nuances that people inevitably run into with cost of goods sold. Hey, my name is Mark Tu and I'm a CPA and online reseller who specializes in helping resellers and online businesses with taxes and with growing their businesses profitably. I get so many questions about cost of goods sold during tax season that I wanted to make this video which is going to be required viewing for all of my clients, so let's just dive in. Historically, the requirement for inventory was to deduct it only when sold rather than deducting it at the time of purchase. This is what I call the accrual method of inventory. Things have changed over the past few years and now there's a bit more flexibility with how you can deduct your inventory. For the nitty gritty detail on that, you can check out my other inventory video, but today we're gonna keep it pretty high level. There's also the option to use what I call the cash method for inventory, which is where you simply deduct your inventory when you purchase it. This method is simpler and requires less tracking, but it also may provide you with less insight into your numbers because it doesn't necessarily match the deduction for your inventory to the sale or income that it generates. In this video, I'm going to show you how each of these methods is calculated and different ways they can be shown on the tax forms. There are four parts to the cost of goods sold equation, and this is relevant whether someone does your taxes for you or if you do them yourself. If you use something like TurboTax to prepare your taxes, it's going to ask you for these inputs. Your beginning inventory plus your purchases minus your ending inventory. Using those three inputs, you can calculate your cost of goods sold. This is how it's laid out on the tax form, but if you have any three of these, you can always determine the fourth. Beginning inventory is simply the cost of the inventory you have on hand as of January 1st. Not what you can sell it for, but rather what you paid for it, your cost. If you didn't start your business until later in the year, the beginning inventory amount will be zero. If the business was already in operation, then the beginning inventory amount should match the ending inventory amount shown on the prior year tax return. Purchases will include the total cost of what you spend on inventory during the year. It doesn't matter if it's sold yet or not, and this includes any sales tax you incur on the items or shipping you pay to get the items shipped to you. That all becomes part of the overall cost of the items. These other lines typically won't be relevant to resellers unless you have a manufacturing business with employees, so don't worry about those. Ending inventory is the same as beginning inventory, only it's the cost of the unsold items you have on hand as of December 31st of the year. Cost of goods sold is calculated using the three inputs above. It's your beginning inventory, plus your purchases, minus your ending inventory. This is the basic formula, and if you think about it, it makes sense. We're just adding up all the inventory we started with and purchased, and subtracting out what hasn't yet sold. That gives us the cost of what did sell. So with the accrual method for inventory, you have to list your beginning balance, and remember, this is the cost of all of the inventory you have on hand, unsold as of January 1st of the tax year. If you're a new business, this will typically be zero. And if your business was in operation the prior year, then this beginning inventory will match the ending inventory from the prior year. Now for purchases, let's say you purchased $1,600 worth of inventory during the year. So you would enter this 1600 right here. And then for your ending inventory, you'll list the cost of everything you have on hand as of December 31st. That includes the items that are listed, that are unlisted, that are in your death pile, any inventory you purchased that hasn't yet sold. And the result is this cost of goods sold of 1,200. It's the beginning inventory of zero, plus all your purchases of 1,600, and then you subtract out the ending inventory, so you're left just with the cost of what's sold. That's the accrual method for inventory, which is the historically required way to account for your inventory. But again, we do have some flexibility now. But rather than tracking those three inputs, many people track their cost of goods sold directly. So for every single sale, they record their cost of goods sold, and then they can add it up to find the annual total. So they don't track their inventory balances or purchases very carefully. Tracking it this way might not be the best way to do it for everyone, but it is helpful for many. And I have a simple free spreadsheet that can help you do this that you can get by using the link below. But tracking it directly like this can sometimes create an issue when the form you're trying to fill out requires those inventory balance inputs to calculate the cost of goods sold number that you already know. In that case, you can often back into it 
using those amounts like this. So let's say you've been tracking cost of goods sold directly throughout the year. So you already know what your cost of goods sold is. You already know that it's $1,200. And if you want the tax form to look as complete as possible, you're going to want to fill in the other three fields. So the next easiest one to populate will probably be your beginning inventory because again, if it's your first year, it'll be zero. Or if you filled out this section last year, this year's beginning inventory should equal last year's ending inventory. So in this case, we're saying we're a new business, so we'll put zero. So that leaves either purchases or ending inventory to figure out. Depending on how you run your business and how you track your expenses and your inventory, one might be easier for you to figure out than the other. Let's say in this case you have a good way of valuing the cost of your ending inventory and you determine that it's $400. In that case we have three inputs and we can determine what the purchases is. It's just a little bit of algebra. So we just move the formula around and in this case your purchases equal your cost of goods sold plus your ending inventory minus your beginning inventory. So there's that $1,600. And even though we already knew our cost of goods sold, now the formula looks complete and accurate on our tax return. Now let's say you had no idea what your ending inventory was, but you did know your purchases. Maybe you have receipts or bank statements where it's easy to determine that your purchases were the 1600. In this case, we have to determine what our ending inventory is just to complete the formula on the tax form. And in this case, it's your beginning inventory plus your purchases minus your cost of goods sold. Or if you want a better visual, you can see that I've rearranged those formulas down here below for purchases, and for your ending inventory like we just calculated. Or instead of doing that, another thing I often see done is what I refer to as the lazy accountant method, which is basically a shortcut. Instead of listing beginning and ending inventory in your true purchases, you just enter the cost of goods sold on the purchases line with zeros for your beginning and ending inventory. And whatever's on the purchases line will flow to the cost of goods sold line. So here's an example of how the lazy accountant or shortcut for the accrual method for inventory works. Again, if you've tracked your cost of goods sold directly, you'll already know that your cost of goods sold is the $1,200. And rather than going back and trying to back into these numbers like we did in the prior example, the shortcut is simply to list zero for your beginning inventory, zero for your ending inventory, and put the cost of goods sold number on the purchases line. And then based on how the formula flows, which is beginning inventory plus your purchases minus your ending, it's gonna flow down to your cost of goods sold line and it's gonna be the result. So even though your purchases weren't technically $1,200, it's just a workaround to force the cost of goods sold deduction on your tax return. And this is a really common way that tax preparers do it. So it's maybe not the most technically correct way to fill out the form, but it's very common among tax preparers and I've never seen it be an issue. But here's one thing to watch out for. If I have a new client and I can see that this is how their cost of goods sold section looks on their prior year tax return, I can't tell just by looking at it if they were using the lazy accountant method or if they were using the cash method for inventory. Because if you're using the cash method for inventory, that means you're deducting all of your purchases at the time you purchase them, whether or not they've sold. Historically, inventory has been accrual. That's why the tax form is laid out like this. It requires inputs that are used to calculate the cost of only those items that have sold. But the IRS forms aren't perfect, and sometimes you have to do minor workarounds to get the correct results that are consistent with the different methods you can use. And before I show you how to show the cash method for inventory on the tax return, I just want to clarify the accounting method selection section of the tax form. This checkbox where you can select your accounting method refers to your overall method of accounting. It does not specifically refer to inventory. The accrual method for inventory is built into the form. Most small businesses use the overall cash method of accounting and that's what most tax preparers mark on this form, even if they also use the accrual method for inventory. If you want to be really technical, you can select the other box and put modified cash, which means overall cash method and the accrual method for inventory. But again, since the accrual method for inventory is built into the form, you can just mark box one for the cash method. I'll often get an email from a client and they say, hey, we're doing accrual, but you marked cash. And then I'll have to say, well, accrual is implied for the inventory, but I marked cash because that's the overall method for the business. Now with the cash method for inventory, remember we deduct all of our purchases regardless of whether or not they've sold. And remember our purchases in this example were 1600 and we're going to list zero for beginning and ending inventory because those are only used if you're using the accrual method for inventory because we're not backing out the inventory that hasn't sold. We're just listing all of our purchases and that's gonna flow down and equal our cost of goods sold. 
Now again, you can see that the inventory accrual shortcut method and the inventory cache method look similar. If I mistake the inventory cache method for the shortcut method or the other way around, that can lead to either overstated or understated deductions. So just make sure you or your accountant knows which method you've been using to avoid misstating your inventory deduction. And this is a very simple spreadsheet, but if you want a copy, you can get this one too in the links below along with other resources to help you optimize your tax situation and overcome the anxiety so you can focus on building your business profitably. Mm -hmm.